What I wanna talk about today is how perfectionism ultimately can cost you your business, how I experienced this, and some tips that I have in terms of how you can change your beliefs so that this doesn't happen to you. So I was talking to a founder uh, last week and he was somebody that uh, applied for acquisition.com and I'm not going to name names or talk about the business itself, but this person had basically with brute force gotten their business to about 15 million a year. And obviously 15 million a year is like no joke. But the issue is, is that oftentimes what we do to get our business to one level is what prevents us from getting the business to another level. And people talk about this all the time. Perfectionism and standards of excellence to a degree are what get people to you know, multiple eight figures, but they're what prevent people from getting to nine figures. And what that is, is that we have a huge level of control over our businesses. And guys, I know this because this is what I did with my business. I was able to get our business to 30 million a year by holding on incredibly tightly. But in order to get past 30 million, I had to learn how to let go. And so when I realized that I was talking to that founder, I felt like that person almost had too many limiting beliefs for us to be able to work with that person. And the reason for that was because the beliefs that that person held around standards of excellence, what they need to oversee in the business, that they need to be quality controlling every single department to every little detail of everything that everyone did every day, though that had gotten them to 15 million, that was the exact reason why this person was hitting a ceiling and had flatlined for the last year and a half. And that was the exact reason why I didn't think they were gonna be able to get to 30 or 40 million because a lot of that has to come down to self-coaching and understanding ourselves and being okay with letting go and not being perfect. And I think that a lot of the times what it stems from is that we identify with the business. And especially if it's your first business, it's like your identity is meshed into the business. And so if the business makes a mistake or has a problem, we identify as being a mistake or having problems. When in reality, they're two separate entities. And if you can separate yourselves and you can develop healthier beliefs around what is perfect, what is not, and perfectionism in general, then we can grow our businesses. And so I think a lot of the times what it is is that it takes a relentless amount of execution, perfect execution with tight controls in order to get a business to 10 million, 15 million, and even sometimes 20 million. But if you wanna get your business past that point, then you have to let go of control. You have to let go of the idea of perfectionism. And then I got slapped in the face with reality when I realized that my business wasn't growing because of my tendencies, because of my need for perfection, and because of my need to feel good about the business in order to feel good about myself. So what happens is that if you can relate to this, if you feel like, oh, I kind of am a perfectionist, I never want problems in my business, I never want to make mistakes, right? It's typically that we're looking at things as problems that are actually conditions of business. Okay, so let me give you an example of what this means. Say that you think an employee is complaining or employees aren't getting along and you think that's a problem. I see that as a condition of business. Now, old Layla would say that's a problem. People aren't getting along, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Layla now says that's a condition of business. It might be that one month you have low sales and you might think there's a huge problem in my business. Layla might think maybe there was a holiday, maybe it's seasonal. There's so many other reasons for a slump in sales. What I'm trying to show you is that there's a lot of things that we control in order to get our business to one level, but we have to let go of those expectations in order to get to the next because the reality is that with every upside, so if you wanna grow your business further, you also have to accept the downside, right? That comes with that. And I think a lot of the times we aren't willing to accept that downside. And so we hold on tighter and tighter and then our business starts to flatline and that's what we see. And so what I wanna share today are just really the three beliefs that I actually broke of myself and the three new beliefs that I learned to embody in order to grow my business past that point that I had flatlined. So I hope you can do the same. The first old belief that I had was if my business is not perfect, then I'm not good at business. Replace that with the new belief, which is if my business is not perfect, it is a business. <laughs> Listen, businesses are not perfect. And it took me a long time to realize this. I used to think it was a problem if my business wasn't perfect and everything wasn't going well all the time. Problems in business are normal and to be expected. If you're not experiencing problems in business, it's probably because your business isn't growing. It is that we try to have no problems, which actually creates no growth. But if you can accept problems, your business will actually grow. And so there are no perfect conditions or solutions in business. An example of this is that back in gym launch in the old days, uh, we had a time uh, where customers were extremely upset about the cost of Facebook advertising. And we had an entire research and development department where basically they were constantly testing new ads, new creative to get the cost down as far as possible. The reality was is that the cost of the platform was going to go up no matter what. And despite spending almost $100,000 a month in tests, we couldn't fight the fact that the platform was getting more expensive. We could get it down, but we couldn't get it to where it was a year, a year and a half ago. I was so upset over this because I felt like I was doing a bad job. I felt like I couldn't control this situation and therefore it was a problem I needed to fix. The reality was is that what I needed to do is I would need to accept the fact 
that the platform was increasing over time and that there was only a certain amount of things that we could do to a reasonable extent before it actually was more of a deterrent. So I spent, you know, I think there was over a year that we spent trying to fight the fact that this platform was increasing. And I think about the amount of attention that I lost to that because I couldn't accept the fact that my business wasn't perfect, right? It's almost like fighting gravity. I was like, we should be able to get lower costs despite the fact of the platform rising for every single other person. It's an unreasonable belief. And so if we can trade our beliefs for believing that if we have an imperfect business, there's something wrong with us or we're not good at business. And you can understand that if you have an imperfect business, that it's probably growing and that it is just a business and that's a condition of business, then you'll have a much easier time growing getting past the part that you're stuck at. So the second old belief that I had was that if I do not perform perfectly as the CEO every day, I will lose the respect of my customers, my employees, and my team. And I used to really think that. I used to think that if I didn't show up absolutely perfect every day, I didn't say everything perfectly every time, I didn't act perfectly every time, I didn't remain completely composed every time, that people would ultimately lose respect for me and they wouldn't want to do business with me or work for me. The new belief is that if I don't perform perfectly as a CEO, that I will give other people the space to also understand that they are imperfect humans and that they too cannot show up perfectly every day and that people will be more transparent with me and I'll probably have better working relationships. I used to think gritting my teeth through it, showing up perfectly every day, pretending like I wasn't a human, basically being like a robot was a strength of mine. But what I realized was that showing up like that actually prevented me from having authentic relationships with my team and with my customers. Because not showing my mistakes made me unrelatable. And so maybe you feel that way. Maybe you're growing your business and you feel like it's the first time you've done it and you're terrified. So you don't want to show up. You don't want people to think you're human, right? We want to think that we're above everyone else. We're better than everyone else because we're the leader. We're the CEO. But the reality is that you're human just like everybody else on your team. And if you can not hide things from people, then they won't hide things from you. And so the more likely you are to have a better relationship with everybody on the team, if you can just be yourself. And here's the thing that I realized is that teams that aim for perfection and aim to hide things from each other will always move more slowly and they will always be more judgmental of one another and there will always be less trust. And I saw that because I looked at the culture that we had on our team and I said, why are people hiding things from me? Why are people judging themselves so harshly? And then I just looked in the mirror <laughs> and I realized it was because I was doing that to myself. And so I realized that if I wanted to change the culture of my team to have a team that was more cohesive, that moved faster, that wasn't you know, afraid of being seen in a different light if they were having a bad or off day, then I need to accept that about myself. And so once I realized that being imperfect was a better goal than being perfect in terms of how I show up as a CEO, I was able to move so much faster and I was able to have more transparency and better connection with everybody on my team. The third old belief was that if my business is not exactly where I want it to be right now, then I'm just not good enough to be there, right? I used to think if I'm not at a billion yet, it's because I'm not good enough to be at a billion. Here's what I realized. If my business is not exactly where I want it to be right now, it might be that I have unrealistic expectations and I need to be more patient. So a lot of people judge themselves and I'll see them come to me and I see it, I think that seeing it in others has actually helped me see it myself more. Is they'll come to me, they'll be like, Layla, I've been doing this for two years, I'm only at 20 million, why am I not X, Y, and Z yet, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I don't understand why I haven't gone faster, what is it that's a deficit in me? And they're constantly searching for like what the deficit in themselves is in order to grow and move. And I look at them and I'm like, dude, there's no deficit. You're literally doing all the right things. I feel like you have all the right character traits. And it's just a fact of the matter is, is that these things take time. If you look at most of the billionaires in the world and the people have made hundreds and hundreds of millions, yes, what we hear is all the stories of people who blew up overnight, but most of them, 90% of them, it takes years and decades to get there. And so oftentimes what actually prevents us from getting there is the fact that we think it should be going faster. So we try to go faster and we try to speed it up. And by doing that, we actually work against our plan. And then we actually take longer to get there because we've taken so many routes or detours from our route. And then we steer off the road because you are actually distracting yourself because you think you should be getting there faster. And so the reality is oftentimes the way to get there faster is to move slower and just stick with the plan. But we judge ourselves for the pace. We judge ourselves for why we're not there yet. And the reality is a lot of the times, and I see this, it's just that we just need time and you need to give time time. So like a good example of this is like, I could judge myself and say like, why am I not at a billion yet, Layla? Well, I sold majority stake in my other businesses and now I've started a new business, which is only seven months old. Is it reasonable to think that a business that's seven months old should be at a billion dollars by now? No. Is it exceeding the goals that I've already set? Yes, we've already surpassed our yearly goal, yet I'm still not satisfied. And so then I just tell myself, I'm like, oh, I'm just not being patient. And I see that so much in other people. The thing is, is that you don't need to feel patient in order to act patient. So just because my business isn't where I want it to be yet, and I can think things like, oh, I may not be good enough, like I should go faster, all these things, I don't need to listen to those thoughts. 
I can just continue to follow the plan and I can just behave as if I'm a patient person because the reality is, is actions speak louder than words. And so if you can act patient, it doesn't matter the thoughts that occur in your head of wanting to go faster. If you act that way, then that is who you are. Overall, what I want you to get from these three beliefs is the understanding that there is no such thing as perfect. And if you continuously try to attain perfection in your business, you're actually gonna prevent your business from growing. The fact of the matter is, is that if you spend more time trying to move the business forward and not trying to be perfect, you will actually go faster in the long run. And how I define perfectionism in this context is the refusal to accept standards that are anything short of perfect. Perfect meaning complete and without problems. And so then I would go there and say, perfect is unrealistic. It is an irrational belief to believe anything could be perfect. Because the thing is, is that we're making up the standards in our mind. And so like I could say that this dinner is perfect and the next person could say that the dinner is imperfect. What is the standard based upon? It's not based upon anything rooted in reality. It's based upon our perception in our brain. So even if you try to make your business perfect, you can't because it's only perfect to your standards and nobody else's. So a lot of people ask me, Layla, how do I know that I should be patient in the current vehicle I'm in? Like, how do I know that I should be being patient versus doing something else? And the question is, what supports your argument to be patient? Do you have evidence to support that the path you're taking is logical and will lead to the outcome that you desire? Sometimes what people use as a reason to not be patient is emotion, not logic, right? They're like, I don't, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel fast enough, right? But if you look at the evidence, have you laid out your business plan? Have you done the projections? Have you studied the market? Have you supported it with the fact that you like it and it's something you're strong at? And if you've done all the work ahead of time to lay out logistically all the evidence as to why this business should succeed, then you should continue to follow that path. Now, maybe if you haven't done that, then maybe the answer isn't to be patient if you haven't done any work ahead of time. But if you've accumulated all the evidence ahead of time to prove to yourself and to prove to the market why this is a good business, the answer is patience. So if you're wondering like if the vehicle you're in is one you should be patient with or you should change what you're doing, I have a video where I talk about how to figure out what business to start and how to figure out if the business that you're in is the right business for you and you can go check it out here.